Hey guys, Rob here with another shoe review for you. Now on today's review, we're discussing a shoe company that I really don't have a whole lot of experience in, but I still feel that it is a beneficial shoe company in many ways uh, for what they have brought to the table over a plethora of running shoes. Some of the trash is going out. Today we're discussing a running shoe that is a very common company that everyone knows about, uh, but they have such a wide array of running shoes to choose from, and this one falls right into the daily tra trainer category. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I really appreciate it if you guys would click the like and subscribe button uh, following the video or during the video it really helps me create more videos for you guys the viewers uh, so that you can enjoy the uh, running shoe reviews and the other various vlogs that I do about running or hey maybe even that car uh, as well if you're interested in cars so please if you don't mind click that like and subscribe button below Now getting right into it, this is the shoe in question right here. It is the Adidas or Adidas uh, Supernova Plus running shoe. This is a new shoe for 2021. It's really just some minor updates to the original Supernova, but I think what they've done is they've made this shoe just a little bit more comfortable to run in and something that makes it a little bit more uh, friendly, not only for beginner runners, uh, but for experienced runners as well, if you're looking for something that has a little bit of comfort uh, that can take you the distances as well. So we're gonna get right into it with the Adidas Supernova Plus. It even says it right there, check that out. The upper. So the upper here is made of an engineered mesh upper. Uh, it does have some really unique traits to it, such as this little you know, line that kind of goes around the whole front and side of this shoe. Uh, this is actually a reflective line, so if you like to go out running, although this is a really bright color, so if you can't see me running in this particular shoe, uh, I think there's a, a serious problem right here. But does have this breathable engineered mesh upper and in the toe box area you can actually see that it is this really thin kind of almost plasticky material right up here uh, in the toe box it is incredibly breathable even going up the sides here even with these uh, adidas stripes overlays you can still see the uh, perforated holes in the mesh underneath and then you've got that like i said the plasticky mesh that's kind of over the top here now this is a prime green shoe and what that means is it is mostly made of recycled materials so if you're into uh, doing good for the earth being green all of those type of things these are the shoes for you uh, it's it's definitely you know the quality of this thing the quality of the upper is pretty good it does have a relatively thin tongue in here but it does have some padding over the top so when you do lace these things down uh, it doesn't you know put too much pressure on the top of your foot that being said it's not the most comfortable lockdown that I've had but it is a decent lockdown I did have to do the runners loops as you can see here uh, to cinch this shoe down and uh, because the original loops that are just up here doing a regular lacing doesn't really give a good heel lockdown uh, very reminiscent in a way to the Pegasus 37 in the way that the lockdown felt but this one when you actually lace loop it it does lock you down and it does hold you into the shoe very well it's just for whatever reason these loops I felt like are too low these these top loop this one right here is a little low on the foot so like my ankles almost all the way back here and the 
the loop is down here almost more towards the midfoot area and not close enough to the ankle and to me it just it didn't provide a good lockdown do the lace loop locks it down really well have no problems i do kind of like this um i don't want to say fly wire because it's not fly wire but uh, the first two loops that are right here kind of have this like fly wire type of thing going on right here uh, as you can see so uh, it does lock down the toe area really well so it doesn't move side to side toe box room really nice uh, i actually went i'm usually a size 10 and a half some shoes i'm finding i actually fit better in a 10 than i do a 10 and a half this one is a size 10 and honestly i almost feel like i could have gone down another half size so um so almost i could have gone down a full size in this shoe but that being said uh, even though I've got a, a decent amount of toe space in here towards the front, the width of the shoe is absolutely perfect. It it locks down really well. And it's not too much room. I'm just saying I could have gone down a little bit more, but it's not bothersome. It doesn't feel like you're moving around too much. It just, you know, if, if you're used to having your toe closer to the, the front of the shoe, uh, this, you may have to go almost a full size down on this particular shoe. But... Like I said, half size down, I think is perfect. You know, I, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm usually a 10 and a half. If I go in my SL 20s, I'm a 10 and a half, which those are Adidas shoes. These are Adidas shoes, and they almost feel the same at size 10 as the SL 20s do at a 10 and a half. So that kind of gives you a, a rough idea of what I'm talking about there. So I do like the upper. It does have these nice reinforced eyelet chains. That's a really nice thing. The overlays that are on the sides here are really thick. I almost wonder if they're necessary. They could have just screen printed them, but it, it's these like really thick kind of blocks going up the side. And I'm assuming that it does give some structure, uh, but because, I don't know, to me, it doesn't link up to anything. It's just kind of smacked on top. I don't know if that's necessary, but they're they're kind of just stuck on there. Uh, so that's kind of a thing does have a nice heel flare on the back here heel flare pull tab super comfortable I have no issues uh, with it rubbing up against the back of my foot. In fact, it's extremely comfortable uh, Going on this is an initial impression by the way This is not my full review on this particular shoe. This is just my initial impressions from the initial runs I've done about 15 miles in these shoes uh, so Kind of get and, and done a, a few different workouts in them. So it's not just you know, one type of running, I've done tempos, I've done uh, some intervals, I've done long runs, I've done short runs, I've done easy days, I've done, you know, the, the tempo, the quicker days. Anyways, uh, so I've done uh, 15 miles in these shoes to just kind of get a, a, a rough idea to give you an initial impression on this shoe. So uh, going with the heel counter, ooh, stout, stout heel counter. I mean, there's no movement out of that. That is a stout heel counter. And you kind of feel it, it's got some structure to it right back here too, uh, to kind of keep your ankle nice and secure back there. So really nice part. The insole that's in here is, you know, it's a, it's a typical, typical Adidas insole. It's not the most cushioned insole uh, that you could possibly put in a shoe. That being said, uh, could you put a better one in here? Yes, but then you're, you know, a lot of those other ones, uh, they add a lot of volume to the inside of the shoe and, and the upper might not work that well uh, for you. <coughs> now, uh, let's see, heel slippage, a little bit of heel slippage in this heel pocket area. Like I said, once I got the runner's loop locked down to it, have no issues with it, it locks down really well, it feels nice uh, on your foot. So, uh, the upper, I, I, you know, I give the upper some really good credit. It's really nicely built. It's, it's a no frills type of upper here. It's just a really well built upper. So we, we kind of go with that. Midsole. Midsole. So the midsole here is made of two different types of material. We have Boost 
and you also have Bounce, which is kind of their proprietary EVA midsole uh, technology that they use on these particular shoes. And what really makes this thing unique compared to the previous iteration of the regular Supernova is this also has a little bit of boost up in the toe area. So what makes that unique is not only do you have boost back here in the heel, which if you ran in a boost shoe, you know that it's an extremely kind of squishy, bouncy material, incredibly durable too. Uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a squishy kind of bouncy material, a little bit on the heavier side, uh, but it absorbs impacts really, really well. It's almost pr pretty much considered high cushion type of shoe, um, type of midsole material. So, but in the regular Supernova, they just had it in the heel in the Supernova Plus, they have it in the heel and a little bit right there in the forefoot. Let's see if you can get see it right here. There's a little bit of midsole. Uh, boost right here in the toe area which is super super nice you actually do feel it while you're running uh initially the initial foot step in the shoe feels a little on the firmer side we'll get into that and i think i have a theory why it feels that way but as you're running it actually feels pretty good the the boost absorbs impacts really well in both the forefoot and in the heel area it's definitely if you're a heel striker great shoe you got a lot of boost back here to absorb those heel strikes uh if you're a forefoot striker you've got just enough boost to absorb <coughs> the forefoot landing and if you're a midfoot striker like me uh with maybe a slight heel strike uh, this is absolutely perfect because you land almost perfectly right where the boost both boosts kind of squished together and that bounce midsole has just enough responsiveness uh, so that you don't feel like you're sinking in the shoe. Uh, it, it holds you up, it creates a nice structure for you. So while you're running, you have a nice energy return while you're at it uh, in order to uh, keep running forward. And that being said, it's, it's definitely a, uh, a shoe that I've enjoyed putting the first 15 miles in. Uh, especially with this midsole going on right here. So midsole mixed between boost and bounce does a really good job. Pretty impressed with it. Outsole. So the outsole that we have here is all rubber, as you can see. It's not the continental rubber that you see on the Adidas SL20 or some of the other Adidas running shoes. This is just kind of their proprietary rubber that they use, but I do have to say it's really thick, it's really dense. I don't really feel that all of this rubber is absolutely necessary on the bottom of the shoe. It does have some holes in here that I'm sure help reduce weight, but I'll be honest, like this section right here, right in that midfoot section, I don't know if this is necessary to have all of this rubber on here. There's, there's so much of it and it's relatively thick. You can see just how thick this rubber is on the bottom of the shoe here. And I don't, I don't really feel that it's necessary. You could probably cut a lot of weight off of this shoe if there wasn't so much rubber. That being said, Adidas says, that this shoe it has some support, stability, uh, lateral and linear uh, stability to this particular shoe. And I guess I can kind of feel that because it definitely rides like a very stable shoe. It doesn't have any type of uh, imbalances to it. And I think part of that is one, because of all of this rubber that's down here. Uh, but two, it's also got a lower stack height than most of the shoes that I'm used to running in. Uh, I couldn't find any real specs on this particular shoe, but the measurements that I would take a guess comparing it to some of my other shoes that are out there, I would take a guess and say that this is probably about a 15 to 17 millimeter foot drop in the forefoot, or a 15 to 17 millimeter <laughs> in the forefoot. It is a 10 mil drop. So I would put the heel somewhere in the 25 to 27 uh, millimeter foot drop uh, or um, heel stack height area and you know it's it's definitely daily trainer category uh, it's it's low enough to the ground that you get some good feedback from the road uh, you get some uh, a nice ride out of it 
but it's not so low that you're feeling every little you know bump in it. It definitely has a higher stack height than the SL20 uh, that I run in. I compared the two of them together and it definitely does have a few millimeters more stack height than the SL20, which is why I'm believing it's somewhere in that 15 to 17 mil range in the four foot 10 mil drop. Uh, that is something that is uh, you know available uh, as far as their records are concerned. Uh, which would make this a 25 or 27 in a heel. So right there, in all honesty, with uh, other daily trainers, Nike Pegasus being one of them, uh, Pegasus 3738, let me, you know, fix that. Uh, Nike Pegasus 3738, uh, pretty much same stack height. Uh, and to be honest with you, about the same price point and almost the same weight as the Peg 3738. Uh, this in a men, men's size nine comes in at 11 ounces. It's a bit on the heavier side. I don't have a scale to weigh my weight for this shoe, but it is a bit on the heavier side. That being said, I didn't notice it while I was running. You know, I'm, I, I've gotten used to running in some lighter weight shoes and this shoe doesn't have, it doesn't have the same feeling as a shoe that has similar weight. So like my Saucony Triumphs, those definitely feel kind of squishy, but they're more built to be long run, easy day shoes. This shoe with the responsiveness that has the boost, the upper that's on it, it doesn't feel like a heavy shoe. That being said, the Pegasus 37 and 38 are actually pretty heavy shoes and they fall almost into the same weight as this particular shoe. So. I can't knock the weight too much because there's other daily trainers that fall into the same category. So we're gonna leave it at that. Now, how have I used this shoe? I've used this for just about all of my training that I, I can do. Um, I've used it for a couple of long runs. I've done easy days with it. I've done a couple of interval uh, training sessions with this. Uh, I've done, I've done strides. I've done quite a few different types of runs and it's handled all of them. It's handled all of them. It's not, so if you're doing a speedy workout, it's not the fastest shoe, but you'll definitely feel comfortable picking up the paces in this shoe. You, there's no issues with that. Uh, it, it feels really good underfoot at faster paces. It feels good underfoot at slower paces. It feels good underfoot for long runs. Uh, it, it, you know, the upper feels good for hot days and, and, you know, getting after it. It's got some decent flex to it. That being said, it's not, the rubber flexes a little bit more now that I've broken it in a little bit than it did out of the box, but it's not the most flexible shoe, uh, when you're comparing it to other shoes that are out there on the market. So, um, so this particular shoe, where do I see, how do I, how long do I see this on my initial impression? How long do I see this lasting? Well, because of this rubber that's underneath, I can see this going a long time. So if you're looking for one shoe that's gonna last you a long time to do all different types of training with, I really think this is gonna be a really good shoe, but we also have to look at the price point. This shoe, brand new, $120 from Adidas, uh, so where does that fall in the category? Well, we got to compare it to other shoes right around the same price range. And that includes the Nike Pegasus 37 and 38. Those also come in at $120. Not going to go into a comparison video with this particular shoe just yet because I haven't gotten to 50 miles on it. So I'm not going to compare it, but comparing prices, you have the Nike Pegasus, you have a few other uh, shoes as well uh, that are out there right in the same price range. I would also put in the Saucony Axon, which I know is a high stack height shoe, but that one as I'm getting close to uh, 50 miles in, definitely a daily trainer shoe, definitely picks up the pace really well. It's something you can use for long runs, you can use for short runs, you can do some speed workouts. There is a little bit of a speed penalty with those shoes, but not bad. Um, so Saucony Axon, those are a hundred bucks. And then probably the one that is going to hurt it the most. Well, you also have the uh, Asics Nova Blast. That is another one. Asics Nova Blast uh, is another daily trainer shoe that kind of falls in the same category. The Nova Blast is a little bit lighter, a little bit bouncier. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, I 
I'll say it, it's a little bit better of a shoe, but it's also $130, so it's $10 more. I'm, I don't know if it's gonna last as long as this. Uh, and finally, the one that, in all honesty, is gonna be kind of the hard one to beat, the Reebok Floatride Energy 3.0, which, I hate to say it, but man, that's like Adidas Achilles is, Achilles heel is Reebok, uh, because Reebok, with the Floatride Energy foam, which is a TPU-based foam, same as what you get with Boost, but it's lighter. The Floatride Energy foam is lighter, it's bouncier, has a little bit better energy return, and I'll call it now $100 for Reebok Floatride Energy, so it's $20 less, probably get the same amount of mileage, the same amount of workout, the same just about everything. So there's a few other options out there, but you know what? If you're looking for a really solid daily trainer shoe, this is it. This is, this is a good shoe. I'll, I'll give it that. So when we get to 50 miles, I'll do my full review on this particular shoe, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how I feel after 50 miles. So as always, guys, thank you guys for watching. Please click that like and subscribe button below, and always enjoy the run.